Mr. S. Iswaranan, Minister and the Prime Minister of Singapore's office, Second Minister for Home Affairs and Second Minister for Trade and Industry. Mr. Masogos Surkifli, Senior Minister of State for the Ministry of Home Affairs and Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mr. Ku Boon Wee, Senior Deputy Secretary of the Ministry of Home Affairs. Mr. Jürgen Stock, Interpol Executive Committee Candidate for Secretary General and Vice President of the German Federal Criminal Police, BKA. Senior officials from Interpol and the Government of Singapore. Representatives from international organizations. Partners from the private sector. Distinguished guests. Colleagues from Interpol, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Human history and evolution chart their own way. We individuals are mere instruments in their paths, striving to do what we think is best for a greater good. In the history of international law enforcement, this day marks a milestone. It resonates with the collective dedication of global police cooperation in making ours a safer world. Minister, representatives of the Singapore government, as Interpol's outgoing Secretary General, I consider it an absolute honor to accept this handover of the Interpol Global Complex for innovation from your nation. Singapore has catapulted itself from being a developing nation to a developed one in a matter of decades. Singapore frequently tops global lists as the best country to do business in and is regularly amidst top rankings of global education performance. Singapore also has a spotless reputation with one of the lowest corruption, co corruption levels and lowest crime rates in the world. And of course, Singapore's police force is one of the finest in the world. In 2008, the world witnessed Formula One cars zipping through the streets of Singapore at night. It was the first time an F1 Grand Prix race was held under the night sky. A year later, we're born our very first thoughts. Could this city-state be the place Interpol was looking for? Could it house a new global complex for innovation to complement our headquarters in France? to help us better fight 21st century crime. Eventually, the answer was given by Interpol's member countries at our General Assembly in 2010. It was a resounding and unanimous yes. And it paved the way for establishing what was felt critically essential for the growing needs of law enforcement worldwide. Police are traditionally trained to protect citizens from harm, a harm that is visible or simply physical in nature. But the widening intersection of real and virtual lives challenges that very tradition. And hence, with the Interpol Global Complex for Innovation, or IGCI as we call it, Interpol wanted to establish a center dedicated to fighting cybercrime. We also believe that providing training to our member countries' police forces in the face of new age criminalities must constitute a core component of IGCI. Since the inception of our capacity building and training program, Interpol has, is proud to have already trained 50,000 officers globally in the last several years. But this journey has certainly not ended yet. Rather, with this handover ceremony, it begins. And soon next year, when Singapore celebrates half a century of its independence, IGCI will be inaugurated by my successor on April 13, 2015 truly symbolic of being part of this glorious nation's history. Exactly 100 years ago, it was a city-state, Monaco, that hosted the first International Criminal Police Congress. History was created then, and history is being created right here, right now, yet again, in another city-state, Singapore. Interpol takes immense pride, joy, and responsibility and accepting the keys to this building. But before doing so, I wish to say something. Thank you. While I'm not generally a believer in naming individuals when teamwork made something possible, on this occasion, unusual efforts compel me to do so. Thank you, Mr. Ku Bunwi, for your unyielding belief and relentless support to make the dream of IGCI become a reality. This day, this moment simply could not have been possible without you.
Thank you, Mr. Jurgen Stock, for being present here today to show your encouragement and support. All of Interpol, and I repeat, all of Interpol will give its unconditional support to you for your unanimous election as the next Secretary General of Interpol during our upcoming General Assembly. Those of us who know you, and so many of us do, know you can make us all proud by leading this organization in the coming years and make IGCI the institution we all dream it to become. Thank you, Mr. Noboro Nakatani, the first executive director of IGCI for spe spearheading IGCI's functioning. Thank you to Ms. Julia Viedma Robles for leading the transition team. Thank you to Hak Seng Ang and Anselm Lopez for leading Singapore's efforts to build IGCI. I want to thank current and previous members of Interpol's executive committees, the IGCI working group and all the member countries that have participated in it, police forces from our member countries that have been sec seconding officers to work at IGCI. Your response has been simply overwhelming. Kaspersky Lab, Trend Micro, and NEC Corporation are private partners. Europol, the European Commission for extending its support through its European Cyber Crime Center the IGCI's Transition Support Office for their unending dedication. To the first wave, and I really want to take a moment here, to the first wave of Interpol colleagues to work at IGCI for your courage, commitment, and determination to make this the great institution that it can become. Thank you. There are so many other Interpol colleagues and colleagues from Singapore whom I also wish to thank. But I must say one final big thank you, Mr. Minister, to the government institutions of Singapore, to the police, the people of Singapore. Thank you for believing in Interpol and in the international policing community. I have an official clapper here who really claps loud, and I wanted to thank him, Martin, for, for clapping so loud. In closing, let me say, um, first, let me just take a moment and, and recognize, uh, because they have to be recognized, the, the architects that made this possible, the interior designers that made this possible from Triplin, CBG, all of you that made this possible, that make this structure a reality. I wanted to just thank you personally, because working with me has been difficult. I understand that but the result is definitely worth it. So thank you as well. Our vision of a safer world cannot be realized overnight. It is to be reached bit by bit, milestone after milestone. In a constantly evolving world, this vision cannot be realized without what we believe is also in Interpol's DNA, innovation. Because in the words of Charles Darwin, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change that survives. Let history remember the Interpol Global Complex for Innovation as testimony to Interpol's ability to adapt to change while protecting citizens worldwide from crime, even as crime itself continues to evolve and remain invisible to us all now and forever. Thank you very much.